If you want to participate in our society fully, you got to get vaccinated. For workers and customers in indoor dining, in indoor fitness facilities, indoor entertainment facilities. This is going to be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. Okay, there you got the mayor of New York City announcing new rules for the Big Apple, mandating proof of vaccine uh, vaccination via COVID to enter restaurants, gyms, theaters, you name it, anything indoors. So I decided to hit the street to find out how this mandate will impact the city that's already struggling from the impact of the pandemic. Take a look. So you represent over 4,000 restaurants? Mayor just came out with this guidance. What does it mean for you? Yeah, you know, listen, our city's restaurants have been absolutely devastated. And this is another imposition that's going to be extraordinarily tough for restaurants to deal with. Restaurant workers have been put in the impossible position throughout the pandemic to essentially be the COVID police. Honestly, I'm not real happy about it. I think that it's my business um, whether or not I wanted to be vaccinated. and. I don't feel comfortable telling that information to just anybody. I don't think it's necessary at this point. You uh, take precautions, you wear the mask if you feel not like you need to, and you make yourself comfortable. I don't think it's important that we show it. Do you feel comfortable sharing your vaccination status? I don't even know. I haven't really thought about it. But it sounds fishy, though. I mean, honestly, why not, right? If you're vaccinated and you have your card with you or some proof, why not? I don't really see a downside to it. If you're not vaccinated, you can always stay outside. I feel like uh, it's a good thing and I'll feel safer and I think more people will come to New York as a result. What about the people that can't get vaccinated? They may have, like, medical issues or a national immunity. Okay. What, how do you feel about that? Well, I would think that they'll have to get some kind of permit or something, like, showing that, right? Because it wouldn't be fair. I speak with restaurant tours throughout the city, and there's a lot of people with a lot of different and passionate views about this. But the one thing that we know is we can't get shut down again. And if that's a potential threat, we need to do everything now to avoid it. Thanks for going out there, Lawrence. Good no, job. It's a pleasure. Let's bring in a Fox contributor and law professor at George Washington University, Jonathan Turley. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. What? How, do, how does this play out? Will this hold up in court? It probably will because the standard uh, that applies is relatively low of a rational basis. Courts have been highly deferential to states. In fact, a state mandate of this kind in Massachusetts was upheld in the early 1900s. There was also a lower court decision involving mandated measles shots in New York that was uh, upheld. But it can be challenged. We've seen a challenge by a law professor recently who has natural antibodies and is challenging George Mason University, which is requiring him against the advice of his doctors to get vaccinated anyway. So we're going to have to look at the details on this so-called New York pass. But the key here is that many of these proposals have been supported by people who say we really have to make life hard on the unvaccinated. A CNN medical analyst said that recently. We have to make it as difficult as possible to live without the vaccine. So there's this type of coerced consent model that right. is kicking in here. I was reading uh, last night on uh, this channel, Sean Hannity was talking about how uh, apparently in New York City, only about 33% of uh, African Americans have gotten the shots. That means two thirds of African Americans in New York would be barred from going indoors for, to restaurants and shops and gym. gyms and stuff like that. That's right, and, and this is going to have a disproportionate impact on that population. It also leaves this contradiction of other activities that are not prescribed in this way. Two professors recently came out and said that going out in public should now be viewed as a privilege, not a right. And they analogized it to driving, where you have to get a license. And that's how far this Man. rhetoric is going. You know, they're ignoring the fact that being on public impacts other rights, the uh, religious uh, observation, free speech, right of association. But they want to use a sort of driving model that if you're not, vac you know, if you're not vaccinated, 
uh, then you're sort of like an unlicensed driver who I presume has to stay in your house. Oh, yeah, Professor, I, I just got to get your reaction real quickly. Does that scare you? Uh, because you're a civil libertarian, you're, you, you, you have great defense of the Constitution. So with these laws being implemented in the country, and it seems like a lot of society is accepting it, is that a chilling effect? It, it, it does, Lawrence. It, it concerns me a great deal. That's why we don't we have driver's licenses, but not licenses for free speech. You know, the the United States government and state governments occupy that space that we don't occupy. They don't indulge us. We indulge them. Yeah. They're there to structure the rights that we enjoy. And that narrative seems to be flipping with some of these academics. Interesting stuff. Let's see what happens. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, on this Professor. Website. Thank you. Thank you.